All right, everyone. Welcome to another. Uh, welcome to another Antares Shipyard live stream. Um, we got episode six of the Captain's Table coming to you here. Uh, this is uh, the Resistance is futile. This is the Borg faction pack that came out a couple. Um, well, I think it was probably what 2019 when it came out. Um, somewhere in there, pre-pandemic um, faction pack, but. Um, we had decided that we were we were going to do the rest of the faction packs, mainly because we saw a lot of questions and comments out there in the community at large about whether people should get these faction packs or not. Um, so we thought, myself, David, we thought that it might be a good idea to do these faction packs um, and kind of give people the idea of what's in them and, and how to use them and how it can improve the game or or this and that. Um, so, that's what we're doing. If you're new here and you haven't seen an episode of the Captain's Table before, uh, what we do is we go through each card um, that comes in the faction pack. We read the ability. We take a deep dive into the card. We look at combos, strengths, and weaknesses for each card. And most importantly, find its place in the game today um, with all the cards that are floating around. Um so I appreciate you guys joining us. I'm pulling up a chair. Um, be sure to engage with us in the chat. I, we have it open. I'm, I'm watching it. Um, and we'll get right to you. Um, with, that, with that being said, let's go ahead and introduce our co-hosts. So we've got, as always, from the shipyard. You can find his stuff on YouTube. We've got David Montgomery joining us tonight. How are you, sir? Awesome, awesome. And then our guest host for tonight, um, you can most most commonly see him in uh, the Fremont Reformation League, but he's also out there on the uh, out there in the community. Um, Sam, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Awesome. Uh, I hope you're excited, and ready to talk about some Borg stuff. I know you're you're our resident Borg guy. Yeah, um, most definitely. It turns out I had your guys' audio shut off, so oh, <laughs> no, nobody heard that. Um, well, I can say it all again if you want. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, I'm Sam. <laughs> um, yeah, so so I I suspect that the reason I'm here is because I'm the jerk who always brings Borg to uh, events, um, and what I discovered, <laughs> what I discovered, I'm the villain. Um, what I discovered as I was looking through this pack is. The way that I build Borg actually uses not a whole lot of this stuff, um, and I imagine we'll we'll talk a bit more about that as the as the evening wears on. Um, but for me, building Borg is really about a few couple of elements from the Borg faction, and then a bunch of stuff from from other places. Yeah, yeah, I I felt the same way. I was looking through this stuff earlier today, and I I realized just how how much of it I don't really look at, but again, I'm not a Borg player. Um, right, which which isn't to say that there isn't amazing stuff in here too, right? Like, there's yeah. a lot of stuff here that works well, even if you don't think of yourself as a Borg player, like just generally good ships, right? Things yeah. that, that are yeah. very usable. Oh, yeah. Uh, David, what was what were your initial thoughts on the on this pack before we dive into the cards? There are a lot of different aspects that i like in different situations um, mm. like captains have use on borg ships and in other places upgrades certainly have uses all over the place um, i think there's ways that they've made most borg ships better in some way mm -hmm. um, and there's some love for non-borg ships to be able to use some borg stuff True. Which, you know, it, it's a good balance overall. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's uh, head on to the table here. All right, so 
First card in the faction pack we're going to go over tonight is the USS Voyager. Intrepid class. It is dual faction, so it is Federation Borg. Um, this is probably the ship you guys see the most of getting played. Um, we're talking 5, 2, 4, 6. It's got a Borg, Tech, Weapon, and two crew slots coming in at 34 points. Free action. If the ship performed a green maneuver this game round, perform a target lock action as a free action. Um, David, do you want to take this one first? Yeah, th this is one. Uh, the more I, I sink into this, uh, the more combos exist, um, the more token gluttony you can uh, perform. <laughs> uh, so, so right now we're playing in this kind of uh, resources be free mm -hmm. environment, and, and uh, captain's chair is a really fun resource um, because after performing a green or white maneuver, you get to remove a disable token from an upgrade equipped to this ship. Well, you're already doing a green maneuver to get the benefit here. So it's a natural fit. Yeah. Uh, there's all kinds of, after you do a green maneuver uh, cards in this game, there's Valeris as a fed crew upgrade. There's a uh, mirror Beverly crusher as a captain. But there's also some speed adjuster cards, uh, like the Impulse Upgrade. Uh, Jordy LaForge is a crew that can uh, change how fast you're going, give you more green options. And I think that's something to explore. Because, and I know this is a point of contention amongst people, but the Intrepid Maneuver Dial is okay, but it's not great. Yeah, and if you're if you're depending upon green maneuvers, you've got one banks, a two straight, and a three straight. While that doesn't make you super predictable, it doesn't give you a ton of flexibility. That's so true. It, it's it's something to consider, just giving yourself a little more, uh, a little more in the realm of options uh, to do some more greens. Uh, and, and take more advantage out of uh, the the ability that you have here. Yeah, that's true. Um, Sam, do you got anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, I just add into that. Um, I'd I, I think I'm more of a fan of this maneuver dial than uh, than maybe uh, than maybe others are. I, I, it's not the best. Uh, there are mm -hmm. certainly times when you really, really wish that you could go one forward, uh, and it's easy to forget that you can't go one forward with this, and then be like, oh, well, I'm in a really weird position right now. Yeah. Um, but having having white two and three turns is, is useful, right? Being able to do that kind of turn on a dime thing that not all ships can do. Mm -hmm. uh, six forward on a white, like... One of my favorite tricks is blasting past the opponent and using a rear fire and arc weapon. And, like, just because you can get that free action target lock doesn't mean, like, that that's, that that's the only thing that you can do, right? And yeah. having someone think that you're going to do a green maneuver and then suddenly pulling out a forward six and being the other half of the board from where they expect you to be is actually pretty powerful, in my opinion. Uh, it's got the rear fire and arc, so there's every reason to just put the enemy behind you um my other comment for this or my caution for this i guess is uh at least in in fremont now there's enough cloaking that don't feel that you can rely on that target <laughs> lock even if you think you can yeah um that's the one downside I think, yeah i think there's a temptation to to throw this on uh a ship with uh ocular implants which will show up later in this pack, um, which is also great, and you should absolutely do that, but don't think that you're necessarily going to get a bunch of free stuff every round because there are ways of stopping that. That's true. Um, the chat asked, why not Chemosite? That's another good Always Chemosite. Yes, always Chemosite. Why not <laughs> Chemosite? Strongly agree. <laughs> yeah, Chemosite's a great, a great upgrade to pair with this, um, boosting up those green maneuvers to even more if you need to. Um, yeah. 
chemo chemo safe. I mean, the only reason not to use chemo safe here is your your shop is faction pure, I guess, or you if you really really need that uh, tech slot for something else, which might be later in this pack, depending upon things. Yeah, and I think let me check, but I think there is a card now that makes the intrepid maneuver dial a little bit better. Because I think if you put helmsman on this, you mm. all of a sudden you could do that one that one forward if you needed to. Um, just another option to throw out there. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah, I mean, that gives it, a that gives a lot of power. Yeah, because the maneuver doesn't even have to be on the ship's dial. You could just. Yeah, there we go. The chat just said, "Yeah, you could use Helmsman." There you go. The only, the only drawback, and and I think this is the thing that you're going to run into if you're building with the Voyager, is uh, it's an expensive enough ship that you'll you'll run out of points before you run out of good ideas. Yeah, <laughs> that that's true. Um, so yeah, it sounds like Voyager's a, a good ship. A lot of people, sh I, I've seen a lot of people play it. Um, especially, I think last season it was. It was either last season or the season before that in Fremont. It was probably one of the more popular ships that I've seen um, with all the games that I had streamed. They were they just kept showing up. Um, so it's it's a good a good card, a good ship. All right, so moving on, the next card in the stack here is uh, Biomolecular Torpedo. It is a unique weapon. It is locked to a Borg ship with a forward and rear firing arc. Um, has the primary weapon value as its attack. Uh, Federation Borg Duel. So the attack value and the cost value of this weapon are the ship's printed primary weapon value. Attack. Spend two drone tokens on the captain equipped to this ship and target an opposing ship. If this attack hits, place two time tokens on the captain and each crew upgrade equipped to the defending ship. If the defending ship is a Species 8472 ship, place two time tokens on all cards equipped to it instead. Okay. So Sam, what do, what do you think about this card? Yeah, this will really stick it to all the Species 8472 <laughs> players in the meta. Yeah. That'll, that'll show them. Y you know, on the card, this looks really good. I've never seen this played. Um. I think that there's enough things that mess this up. Like, because you need the forward or rear firing arc, it's saying you can't put this on a cube or a sphere. Right. Um, because it requires two drone tokens, you can't put this on any ship that's not... Like, there's so many constraining factors on this that it just doesn't seem to hit the table a lot. Um, one of the things that makes me want to take out captains is captain's skill and putting time tokens on captains doesn't invalidate captain's skill it just gets rid of the text yeah uh so it's 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 less good than disabling a captain um any card that relies on on me knowing what the enemy ship is going to have like oh they're going to have lots of crew um is is tricky so like on the surface if it it looks really good um or it looks playable at least. I've never seen it played, and I don't really, I can't really think of a lot of circumstances where I would play it. Yeah. Um, the chats, yeah, the chats saying Voyager, the Soong would be a good, a good ship to put the card on. Um, the Galaxy class that comes in this pack. Right. I mean, really, any of the, the Borg, um, any of the assimilated vessels, pretty much. Yeah, maybe maybe there's a trick with putting it on the Brel. I haven't thought about that. Mm, maybe the Brel, the Brel being kind of the funniest of the assimilated vessels. <laughs> uh, David, anything you want to add to this? Uh, I have a hard time with this one too. Um, I have a tough time justifying points. Mm -hmm. for lack of a, a super benefit. Uh, this this reeks of old torpedoes. 
if you know what I mean. It's th- yeah. those old five point torpedoes, and uh, this clearly does something. Um, and, and I even went so far as to look and, and see if uh, to see the wording on uh, Daniels, uh, but Daniels only inc- increases one time token placement. Uh, if he increased all time token placements, then there might be a nice combo there because getting three time tokens on everything, I, I could justify the play, but uh, boy, it, it's tough, especially when you consider Ezri such a big piece of the game right uh, now. Yeah. If you hit a ship that has Ezri on it, you're basically doing nothing. That's true. I didn't even thought about Ezri. Of course, this was pre, pre that pack, but yeah, it, it was. And, and you have freedom of choice; you don't have to shoot Ezri's ship, for the most part. Um, but maybe that's the only ship with enough crew that's actually worth targeting. Yeah, so, I don't know. It's uh, this isn't this isn't terrible, but it's not great. I, I could see it in missions. Uh, some of those old Borg missions where you know you're up against a Species 8472 ship, mm-hmm. this is a card to run. So I do think there's a role for it there. Yeah. Um, mm, the chat's pointing out if if you hit Hezri's ship, she gets time tokens too. So her text is blank. Yeah, which which I guess something. then gets into like the order of how you do things. Yeah, which becomes a whole a whole pain. Yep. Yeah. Um. So the only card that I really thought of that just now that you guys were mentioning was maybe Tiro, where you're, you know, in phase if a crew's got a got a time token on it, then you can add a mm. time token instead of removing one. Um, and he he's the same range as the torpedo. So you'd be, be in that. range. Um, I mean, yeah, that's that's really the only thing. And I, I know in, in our meta here at the game store that we played at before everything shut down, um, this card was actually seeing play. Um, people were bringing it and they hit my Vorn, which has a couple of crew members and they... Yeah, it really messed really messed up the flow of my Vorn and kind of took it out for the game. Yeah, we we do live in a world where a lot of people are making crew dependent combos. So yeah. again, you, you you're you're taking a risk here. You're assuming that the enemy is going to be bringing certain things to the table. You have to kind of know your meta to make that work. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it may it may not be good overly, and it may not be overly competitive, but it might be meta good. Um, depending on what meta you're in and, and what it looks like. Um, other than that, I think we've touched on everything for this card. Um, we're not going to say much about this card. We just I just wanted to highlight it. Um, we have a assimilated galaxy class. The Feder- its Federation board got recosted down to 24. And we will... Move on to the next. All right, so the next card on in the in the stack here is three of nine. This is locked to a Borg ship. When the ship performs a regeneration action, repair up to one shield and one hull instead. The ship does not lose its attack from performing the action or the regeneration action. Um, David, go ahead. Yeah, I this this is one. It, I had a tough time. Uh, won't won't lie about that. Uh, I want to think there's some play on it with some of the assimilated ships. Uh, again, that it's a stretch, yeah. but I'm I'm looking specifically at the the uh, assimilated to Deradix just because of how bulky that ship is mm-hmm. uh, and knowing that there's a, a really high likelihood that you're going to take uh, uh, sorry you're going to take 
uh, whole damage. And uh, I think any time you're in in that situation, getting a little bit extra can, can help you because then you can set up a, a round where you know you're not going to shoot. A Dideradix already has a very limited firing arc. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure how the Avatar of Tome... Yeah, actually, I think the Avatar of Tome uh, named ability works with Three of Nine. When you perform a cloak action, you may immediately perform a regenerate action as a free action. Mm. Um, and Three of Nine says when the ship performs a regenerate action. So. Yeah, that should work. Although the, the Avatar of Tome says you cannot attack the round, and Three of Nine says you, uh, you <laughs> don't lose your attack, and I forget permissive versus restrictive wording and I don't want to get into a rule debate unless somebody knows that offhand. Uh, uh, but anyway, it might be a nice combo. I, I, I strongly suspect that the you you cannot attack this round from the Avatar of Tomed would would supersede the three of nine one because the three of nine one says you do not lose your attack from the action and the Tomed says if you do this whole series of things you cannot attack. Probably. So I, I I don't think it quite works. If it did work, you're <laughs> you're you're spending thirty nine points on a really cute thing that I'm still not a hundred percent sure is worth doing ultimately. Oh, I never said it yeah. was worth it. I'm just trying. Yeah. Here. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but yes, yeah. Sam, how do you what what do you think I, of this card? How do you plead? I think it's a trap. I mean, I think um, the reason to use a uh, a regenerate action at all is if you don't have a shot. Um, if you do have a shot, you should do the things that make that shot better, like a target lock or a battle station or whatever. Um, if if you're doing this with... The, I mean, maybe there's a world where you've taken a green maneuver with the Voyager and you have a free... No, because the Voyager doesn't even give you the regenerate. So, right. Yeah, like I, healing two hit points is better than healing one. Being able to take an attack is great, but in all cases, if you can take a shot, make that shot better. Um, if you're going to, if you're going to get killed in one shot anyway, two hit point. I mean, maybe there's a world where two hit points saves you, but that's a real edge case for for five points. Um, theoretically, you could be playing a game where you just get behind the opponent and heal, and then turn around. Like, there's a world where that could be your build. I haven't really seen it. Yeah, I mean, and let, let me ask you, as as the resident Borg player, how often do you actually use the regenerate action? Uh, if I have a uh, crit that I need to get rid of. Um, is pretty much the only situation where I use the regenerate action. Uh, because or sense. or yeah, because again, in most places, uh, my goal for the Borg, for for three sixty arc Borg is to get behind you. I don't necessarily succeed at it all the time, but to get out of your arc and then fire at you. Uh, if I'm out of your arc, I don't need to regenerate because you're not going to shoot me. That's true. That makes sense. Um, the chat's suggesting you could put him under Genesis effect. Um, that'd make him two points. Yeah. So he's, that's, he's, that's something. It's definitely more worth it at two points. Um, but are you not putting something else under Genesis effect? Right, you only get one of those. <laughs> right. Um, all right, so yeah, three of nine. That's that card. Next card in the stack here is an elite talent. It is the Collective Consciousness. It is locked to a Borg Captain. Uh, planning phase. Place three time tokens on this card and target all friendly ships within range one to three with a Borg Captain equipped to them. If the captains equipped to the target ships replace their captain skill with the captain skill of the captain equipped to this ship this game round. Cost of five. Sam, what do you what do you think? Uh, so I, I, I think there's a world for this that exists outside of normal play. 
Um, I love things that are that are all all friendly ships. Mm-hmm. And if you're if you're playing a game with your buds, it's like a like a two hundred point game or a two hundred and fifty point game or something, right? Like this this gets better and better the bigger that all is. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. So, like, if if that's the world you're in, I'm super into it. Um, <laughs> outside of that world, I'm trying to remember what's what's the um in Fremont or as. Uh, as has been mentioned, we're uh, we're playing with all the resources, and mm-hmm. what's the resource that allows you to have two captains? Uh, fleet commander. Fleet commander. So maybe there's a funny thing you could do where you put this on a on a on a board captain, and also Khan is on that ship, or something. Um, but we're in edge cases. Mm, yeah. Hmm. David, what you got? Yeah, I feel like uh, a. I have to say this is super thematic. Uh, this is the board yeah. working together, um, and, and I'm never gonna trash something like that. Uh, I, I'm with Sam completely in that. I think this is mission play. I think this is. Um, it might have some use in like one thirty. Uh, faction pure play when you're running 130 points of Borg but even then you're probably running three Borg ships so you have to question is uh, bumping up two of your captain skills every three rounds worth it and maybe it is Uh, the Borg have some really good captains but they don't always have the highest captain skills so if you put this on something like Locutus with skill nine and you're bumping your tactical drones up from skill four five six up to nine that could be a difference maker yeah yeah but i'll I'll add into that though that in this in this world we're living in of like dahar masters and things where like captain skills are are like a 12 and 13 even the best borg captain skill isn't going to be like super good no yeah um, they're mentioning a scout swarm with tractor beams and cutting beams. That's coming from James. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all fun and games until someone brings a Gorn, right? Like your swarm build. Uh, I see your swarm build and raise you the things that, that shoot swarm <laughs> builds out of the sky. <laughs> Here's my fusillade and my disruptor bombardment. Right, right, exactly. I want to believe, but... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so not not much else to really add to this card. I mean, it's it is as you guys say it is. It's a mission play card. Um, I don't see really much competitiveness out of it. But it's a good mission play card. Yeah, yeah. As I think Sam put it the best when he said, "The bigger all is, the better the card gets." Mm-hmm. Um, so the next card in the stack is seven of nine. Uh, add one Borg um, slot to the ship's upgrade bar. All Borg upgrades equipped to the ship cost minus one. It is a two-point crew. David, go ahead and lead on this one. The seven's obviously great when she can go on a Borg ship that already has Borg slots so that you get more out of her discount. Yep. But she's also intriguing because you can put her on something else. And get one of those Borg upgrades uh, off faction. I, I don't think that's the best use for her, but um, but it's at least nice to have that open. And uh, yeah, I want to. I'm at least open to exploring that idea, uh, and especially now that there's some cheaper Borg slot upgrades. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be a potential. I mean, you're paying faction penalties and such, so it's probably not great. But I, I do like seven in combination with some other stuff in this pack, like Balana and uh, more of yeah. the the board cards. But uh, yeah, seven's a nice support card. Yeah, uh, Sam. Yeah, strongly agree. Fantastic card. Um, I think. 
I agree with every part of this. The, the funny thing about Seven is that a number of the Borg upgrades that you'd want to put on non-Borg ships are restricted to Borg ships only. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they very cleverly doubled up on you need to have the slot, but also you need to be this type of ship. Um, yeah. So that that stops the uh, the grossest abuses that you make it out of Seven. Um, but most Borg ships, you want to have more Borg upgrade slots than you have, right? Like, there's a lot of good things you can put in them. Um, so, and, like, the fact that she makes them cheaper, the more of them you have, also strictly great. Like, definitely... Ah, but the paradox is, Borg ships also tend to not have a lot of crew sh slots. So you gotta kind of decide how you want to divvy up your slots here, right? You might get yourself into a situation where you're choosing between Seven and, like, Quark, and that's complicated. <laughs> Very much. Um, I know in our local meta here, we did see um, Seven show up on an NX with ah. enhanced hull plating and Borg Blade of Hull Armor on it. Mm -hmm. Seven, seven yeah. and, and of course Torres was there to, to mark it even down even further. Um, but that's, that's an option. That's an option, yeah. I mean, honestly, she's a great way to get a battle stations where a battle stations isn't if you need it. Um, especially if you have a way to get rid of a crew upgrade for benefit later on. Um, like her opening up the slot for threat analysis. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, she makes that one point if you can get rid of her. It's it's not the cheapest thing you could do, but it's a it's a possibility. No, that that's something you can you can put on the three four or three eight four. You'll give it a she'll make threat analysis fairly cheap on that. Yeah. Interesting, interesting stuff. Okay, seven, good card, very good card. Yeah. Uh, next card is probably that top tier as well. Um, it is unique Borg locked to a Borg captain. Technological distinctiveness. Action: Place one mission token on this card. When attacking with the ship's primary weapon, this ship rolls plus one attack die for each mission token on this card. Okay, uh, David, I think it's... Or no, it's Sam's turn to take it away. Sam. Yeah. Sam. Ban this card. <laughs> Here comes the love letter. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't even... Um, so, the... the I should I should clarify, it's it's, Lord, it's luck to a Borg ship, not a Borg captain. Yeah, um, I, I misspoke. You're right. So, you could do things like put this on a ship with Picard and have a Borg sphere with nine attack dice, ten attack dice at range one uh, that has a target lock and a battle station, right? Rule of three is the is the limiting factor on this, but uh, combo this with anything that lets you take extra attacks. Um, yep. Like, you can, uh, I assume you have uh, the additional phaser right hanging around in here somewhere. I do. Whoops. Well, so, All the cards! That's not what I wanted to do, but yes, it's here. Okay. Um, right, so like, if you have time to keep charging this thing up, you can, you can subvert the additional phaser array downside, because if you have five mission tokens on the technological distinctiveness, plus five, minus two, you're still at three, you're still firing maximally. Uh, your opponent shouldn't let you do this, but if you're allowed to do this, right, like, it keeps benefiting with whatever attacks you're taking out of this ship. Mm -hmm. Ban this card! Ban it! <laughs> yeah, David, do you have any more to add to it? Yeah, stick it on Sphere 4270, that way you get to divide your attack between two different ships and then follow it up with additional phaser array and... Make all oh. the things hurt. Yeah, I should I should mention you you brought Worf over. The the combo with that is putting it on the Brel, right? The Brel is is small enough that you can warf it, but can still shoot an ungodly number of attack dice. Yes. Not during the attacky part of the game. That. Uh, and that's gross. Yeah, you can do that. <clears throat> well, there's uh, and obtain it. Yeah, I was gonna say Tain is the other one. It's uh, well, it's at that point. It's why not all the things yeah um yeah it's 
technological distinctiveness uh, because it doesn't say uh, this round or anything like that. It's just a couple of rounds to charge and it's really, really, really good and really, really, really underpriced. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think you guys hit the nail on the head, really. I mean, it's it's a great card and for me, it made the Borg more scary than they already were. Um, being a non-Borg player, seeing this on the board makes, you know, I, I kind of have a feeling that a lot of the Borg players take their time to come forward and fight because they want to build this up. And then especially if they have the additional phaser arrays combo with it, you, you know they're trying to get at least five mission tokens on that card before they want to engage you. Um, just to negate the it's, minus two. It's it's beautifully thematic. Um, I, I will I will give it that, and it does create the the feeling that you want to have, feel when you're facing the Borg, which is this is really scary, and it's just going to keep getting scarier. Uh, like it, it has a sort of like foreboding feeling. Um, if you're using this pair with dispersion field, otherwise your enemy's going to try to get rid of it real quick. Mm, true. Okay, so I don't think there's really much more to say. About about it. It's a dang good card. Yeah. Next card in the stack here is one per ship. Locked to a Borg ship. Borg multi-adaptive shields. You must discard this card if the ship has no active shields. When defending, during the compa compare result step, cancel one hit. And that is um, worth five. David, go ahead. So something that doesn't seem like it would work well with this, but but something I'm going to advocate for is pairing this with one. Okay. Uh, one means that uh, when you take damage to your shields instead of destroying them, you disable them. Now, if you have to suffer all of your shields, or damage to all of your shields, you will lose this card. But... If you don't, if you lose all but one, you're going to keep this around a whole lot longer. Uh, and I think that's a pairing that's worth uh, exploring. Uh, it's pricey, right? One in itself is, I think, four points, maybe five. Multi-adaptive shields is also five. Uh, yeah. And there, there's a lot there, but uh, you make yourself very, very difficult to kill. Uh, and if an opponent can crack that, uh, I think they deserve to get through it. Uh, but it, in some ways, it's protecting your investment. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's there's ways to, to bump your shields up as well. So you have more. I'm thinking if you put it on the assimilated Galar with the new Type 3 Galar card. Oh, yeah. So I guess there's ways to, to raise the shields up above whatever threshold they're trying to get damage through. Yeah, there's also reinforced shielding yep. for just a plus two shields. There's reinforced shields uh, so that when you take three or more damage from a single attack, you get a shield back. Yep. Uh, so that's a, a nice balance. Yeah, Sam, what do you have to Yeah, add? I mean, I think... I feel like I'm supposed to be talking about combos, but I'm actually going to be talking about anti-combos. Um, <laughs> this is this is one of those things where it's it's great. Um, it's there's the the Borg were already defensible, and this is scary. Um, we live in a world where projected stasis field exists, mm -hmm. um, and you could lose. Even more, right? I mean, like you're already you're already in a bad position if you've got projected stasis fielded, um, yeah. and if you've invested five or nine points in having this this setup, um, you're going to have uh, lushed points down the drain. Uh, so, I guess I'm saying don't don't shy away from combos like this necessarily, but if you're building a combo like this, just keep projected stasis field in mind and 
try to construct a way around that, right? There's the big board cube that you can't do things to the shields of. Great, that's useful. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you really want to think about, like, captain skill and when you're moving, right? Um, so that you move in after the other person and then just staying far enough away so that they're not going to project in stasis field you the time you want to do things. Um, that's that's the only thing that, that makes me not just totally gung-ho about this card. Okay. I think those are it's all valid points. Um, yeah, I don't really have much to add either. It's it's uh, it's a lot of points to get the Sutherland's ability. Um, when you can just run the Sutherland and have a better a better ship. Um, that's really my thoughts on it. So we can move on. All right, the next card in the stack is uh, Crew. It is unique. It is Tuvok. Federation Borg dual faction, cost of five. When defending, during the modify attack dice step, spend one drone token on the captain equipped to this ship. The attacking ship cannot reroll any attack dice this attack. In addition, if the attacking ship has any Federation weapon upgrades equipped to it, convert one hit or one crit into one blank. Um, Sam, it's it's your turn to go first as well. My answer for this one's gonna be eh. so. <laughs> so again, we got we've got the limiting factor of drone tokens. Yeah. Um, and I feel, and maybe this is different in your home meta, but I feel that mostly I see Borg ships that don't have Borg captains on them, with a couple of exceptions, most of whom appear in this pack. Um, yes. Like, we'll see Locutus, Locutus, this Locutus, being really, really useful um, because it's hard to make a strategy around uh, shooting yourself, like, becoming a less good captain every time you want to use your abilities. That's um, very true. So, it, this would be a, a very tempting card if it cost... Well, this would be a more tempting card if it cost three points. I still don't know if it would be a very tempting card. Um, it's nice that it doesn't disable or get time tokens. You can keep using it as long as you have drone tokens. <sighs> but, yeah, yeah, it's it's just so limited, right? Like, yeah, I guess there's a lot of Federation torpedoes out there that this could be, like, even more useful on. But you're counting on a lot of things for this to be useful. Well, given with the new Federation faction pack that's out, I mean, even even in the Reformation League now, um, TNG, we've got at least two people running a Sao Paulo with phaser cannons. Um, yeah, and Th that's true. This, the Sao Paulo. That's true. The um, the the better the Federation becomes, the more usable this is. Uh, yeah, you can still count on a certain number of like Type Eight phaser arrays b being out there. So that's true. Against against. Against certain types of builds, this is useful, and there's a lot of it in the meta, but, you know, there's also still a lot of Ferengi Photon torpedoes running around, where this doesn't really help you much. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, David, what, what do you got? This slows down additional phaser arrays a little bit. Uh, that's another fed weapon mm -hmm. that, uh, that's there. I just don't think Tuvok does enough. And uh, the only thing I can point to 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 make him a little bit better is to put him on the Queen Vessel Prime so mm -hmm. that in the end phase you add a drone token uh, back to the captain on the ship so that you can do this even more. But that's a, a, a game you're going to lose eventually. Uh, yeah, it, Tuvok's rough to, to play well. And uh, I think I'm with Sam that this is one of the the cards that just feels overpriced and if i have any big criticism of this pack it's that the crew specifically feel off priced yeah they they do feel i i think i can agree with you on that that they feel it doesn't have the same feeling as the other packs it seems like the crew as you guys have said are more lean more heavier priced than they they should be if they had come in a different pack um, but yeah, Tuvok, 
chat says that he's good with Acutus, and th that's true. Um, especially since they're skill locked. Um, I think that's the biggest upside there. Um, all right, next card is a uh, unique Borg Tech three points, a simulation tubules. Action. Discard this card and target an opposing ship that is not cloaked and has no active shields from range 1 to 2. Steal one crew upgrade to the target ship, ignoring this ship's restrictions. Okay. David. It's, it is your go. So this is one of the cards you could bring over with 7 of 9. Yes. Uh, I think this one's at least intriguing. Um, it is one use, and that's a that has a downside. It does have the limiting factors, but there are ways to, you know, drop shields. Projected stasis field is the easy one, um, and there's enough crew in the game that stealing crew is a is a viable play. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I find myself liking the old assimilation tubules a little more because you could steal more stuff with them. But uh, yeah, th this isn't terrible. Um, but I, I almost find myself asking why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sam, what do you what do you got to say about this card? I really want to see a build where which is all about stealing the opponent's stuff. Um, cool. I haven't seen that. I think it would be fun to like just see on the table how it goes because there's a lot of combos out there and you can really mess up a combo by stealing like any two or three cards from someone. Oh yeah. Um I think if this were steal one anything equipped or if it didn't have the no active shields requirement, I would play this. Yeah. Um but there's just, again, two limiting factors. If you've projected stasis field someone already, you've already you've already boned that ship, right? Like, this is overkill. It's a waste of an action. Just target lock it so you can destroy it already. Um, if you wanted a crew on this ship and you are relying on stealing it from your enemy, just put that crew on the ship, right? <laughs> it's... It's not quite... There's just like too many things that make it not quite worth it. Or maybe if it was as it currently is, but it was range 1 to 3. I, I don't know. Um, slightly too limited. Yeah, yeah. But just picture you could steal like a, an Odo or a Vendorian spy. Like, then you're not limited. You're, you're getting any crew. Right. That, there's a world. There's a world <laughs> in which that happens. <laughs> yeah. Um not a very good world but no it's a funny world <laughs> Some, sometimes yeah, your fleet is perfectly designed to ruin the other person's fleet uh and that's that's fun but again you can't rely on the simulation tubules being exactly the thing you need to win the game deal a second esri yeah. sure yeah well i mean there there's a place but i, I think you guys again are right there it's just there's too too much too many limiting factors going on here um, for a one-use card. I do like that it's only three points for a one-use card. Um, it just it feels like they were trying to fix the old one, but they ended up kind of overdoing it a little. Well, was anyone ever running the old one? I yeah. I've never seen it run. When I was less good at this game, I ran the old one. I think <laughs> I ran the old one when you could steal from yourself huh. to That's move stuff onto my own ship. Huh. But It's still not great. I mean, <laughs> I like the, the point cost of this one is obviously the, the thing that makes it much better. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the next card. Uh, again, it's another unique weapon. It is Borg ship locked, forward firing arc, or 360 um, ship. Advanced proton beam uh, costs three points. The attack value of this weapon is the ship's printed primary value, or weapon value. Attack, remove this card from play. Spend two drone tokens on the captain equipped to the ship and target an opposing ship at range one. All damage inflicted by this, uh, this attack 
ignores the defending ship shields. Oh boy. Um, Sam, I think it's your go. Yeah. So here's here's my deal when it comes to things that ignore the opposing ship sh shields. Mm -hmm. uh, if if you've not built your entire fleet around it, it's not helpful, right? Like if you put an attack through the opposing player's shields, you either need to keep attacking through their shields or make sure that that one attack just took out the enemy ship. Yeah. Or or pray for good crits, I guess. Um, and this one is at least unique. You can't put a, these on a bunch of different Borg ships and just get a bunch of ships to the shields, uh, shots to the shields. So maybe there's a world where you're putting, like, you're doing this and, and Jem'Hadar shenanigans at the same time. Um, but, or, or again, you put this on a really beefy ship and just, like, one-shot someone through their shields instantly. Uh, this gives you that possibility. You can put it on the 6.360 degree things. But then you have to also get in range one, which means all you also packing Uhura, and there's a world for it. I want to see the build that that this comes in, um, like someone do this and just destroy someone. Uh, but again, there's a lot of limiting factors to it. You're noticing a theme in in my complaints about these. <laughs> and I yeah. should say, limiting factors don't mean it's bad. It means you just got to be more creative than I've been. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's something that exists that goes with it. Um, let's, let's see what David's got for this card and then I'll bring up something the chat said. I, I think I'm with Sam that, that there is a build, uh, and I think it centers around, uh, the Klingons with, uh, I want to say it's concussive charges, uh, maybe Ferengi doing some shenanigans. I know they have a weapon that bypasses shields. Mm -hmm. uh, you bring in Kang, Kemosai, all, all the stuff that packs on hits. And I know I've talked about that in, uh, I think it was the Blood Oath yep. uh, Captain's Table. Uh, and this could be a part of that. Um, and maybe this goes best on the oversized cube just because range one is so big, but I don't, I don't know. I, I, I almost feel like if I'm going to run that bypass shield build, uh, I'm, I don't know that I need the Borg to do it. Um, I could see the, the role of it, yeah. um, but this is a one, this is a one time. This is a remove the card from play. And, uh, and it has to be on a Borg ship that has a captain that has drone tokens. That's yeah, that's true. It's a tough sell, and, and I don't. Yeah, I think I'm with Sam. I just don't have a good combo. Um, maybe it does go with Locutus, and then you at least have the crew slots, uh, and you're not paying faction penalties on those crew, and then you've got Kelvin Uhura at cost and. And that's at least viable, but I think you're out of points on almost yeah. every Borg ship. I mean, Locutus plus this weapon is seven points. Yeah, that's true. Abolish um, the 50-point rule. No, do not. <laughs> um, the chat is pointing out that you could run it in the same fleet with the Vishar. I wouldn't run it on the Vishar, but in the same fleet as the Vishar. So you're... Uh, yeah, right. Again, that's exactly like, right. Like you're playing into that bypass the shields fleet, right? Um, and it's funny because then this gets into meta stuff too, right? Like if you're in a world where there's a lot of shields action happening, you're fantastic. If you're in a world where there's a lot of cloaking, which yeah, at least in Fremont there seems to be a decent amount of cloaking happen, uh, then you've invested a whole lot of points in a strategy that's literally useless to you. That yeah, that's true. Um. Yeah, and isn't there a Vulcan? I feel like was it photonic auto cannon, or the yeah the auto cannon? No, I might be thinking of something else. Never mind. Don't listen. I, mean, okay. <laughs> I thought there was I thought through. there was another Vulcan thing that bypassed shields, but it's not the auto cannon. It's at least scrolling through Vulcan weapons, which is not a thing I've done before. So here we are. <laughs> 
No, I don't. I think it's the Vishar. I think that's what I was thinking of. Okay. So let's go ahead and pull the next card out here. <clears throat> Alright, this is a unique Borg. Uh, cost of two. This ship and all friendly Borg ships within range one increase their agility value by one. Uh, this was Interleague Transceiver. Uh, David, I believe this one is yours. Okay. You know, I don't have any specific combos for this, but I don't dislike the card. Um, I, I, in fact, I, I really do like that it bumps your own ship. Uh, yeah. What what I do enjoy is that this really helps the scout cubes and the assimilated ships. Uh, so early on, I said that there's help for kind of everything mm -hmm. Borg in this pack. This is one of the those cards that helps, specifically helps the scout cubes, because now they're going from, what's their base? Uh, I want to say it's three. Yeah, so now they're getting four base. And, um, you know, Scout 255 uh, is something that we don't see a lot of. But if it's scan now, it's getting five. Maybe you're running Scout 609 as a repair ship. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, those scouts become almost like they're cloaked, but then they still have shields. Um, and that can be an interesting uh, combo and, and something that's tough to get through. Yeah, so. yeah. The chat, chat saying obviously you pair it with seven, seven of nine. Borg slot minus one, on the price, so it's down to one. Sure, and, and it's interesting that you could actually take this off of a Borg ship, and it bumps your own ship, and then all other friendly Borg ships. It never says that this ship has to be a Borg ship. That's very true. I didn't think about it that way. Ah, uh, I see. That that's what the chat was saying. Use seven on on a ship that doesn't have a Borg slot to give you the Borg slot. Yeah, bump us to cost one. Grammar rules. <laughs> Man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Sam. I would say the the downside of that is the the one of the cute things you can do with this is just because the Borg movement is so linear, it's very, very easy to keep a lot of ships within range one. Uh, and if you if you take it off of a board ship, Borg ship, you lose some of that uh, shenanigan power, I guess. Um, I'm going to say that that this isn't a game that's going... This isn't a card that's going to redefine your Borg game. Um, but it's it's very possible that you'll have two extra points sitting around. Uh, and there are worse ways to spend them than this if you've got a couple of Borg cubes, or Borg scout cubes. Yeah. Um, and again... Uh, the more points you have to play with, the more things you can do with this, right? It's hard to have a lot of Borg ships in your fleet. Yeah. Um, but if you're playing at 200 points, you can have, like, multiple spheres all exist under the aegis of this. And one defense die isn't a lot, but over the course of many, many rolls, it might add up a little bit. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't really think this, this card, I mean... There are a lot of other cards to add. You can, I mean, you can pair with Hood Riker and all that, um, but there's really no need to. This card kind of stands alone on its on its own. Um, the fact that it can go on other ships other than a Borg ship is very interesting to me. I never thought of it that way. Um, yeah. All right. So that's Interlink Transceiver. Going on to another Borg slots. This one is one cost of one. Unique distribution nodes. Activation phase. Target a friendly ship at range one. Repair one hull on this ship. And deal one damage to the hull of the target ship. Uh, Sam. Okay, there's so many shenanigans this opens up. <laughs> um, I think, uh, and, and if I'd done my research properly, I would have, I'd have the names of the cards, but... I don't. Um, 
but there's there's a there's a couple of things where it's like if what's the Klingon ship? Someone in the chat will know. What's the Klingon <laughs> ship where if it takes a damage to its hull, it gets an attack? Oh, that's the, AMR. the AMR. Mirror the, the mirror AMR. Right, like I've been having fun with uh, decorating myself. Right, right. <laughs> like there's 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 a couple ways to pull off the same thing. Um, this is a silly way of doing that, um, but it's fun. Like you could definitely build a strategy around, and I think. If you're building a strategy around getting as many attacks as possible out of phase, like if you're doing thing and the the Tain thing, like this can play in that same game. Uh, it benefits that this ship is already mirror, so you could also put Worf on here pretty cheaply. Um, yeah, and just create this world where you're getting three attacks and all kinds of all kinds of buffs on those attacks before the enemy's even done anything. Uh, and that's that's a fun world. For what this is actually supposed to be used for, which is healing your ship or, or distributing nodes in your ships, meh. But shenanigans, A+. plus. Absolutely. David, you want to add to that? I, I really do like it on the AMR. Um, I think the, the one AMR. thing this could set up is a little bit of 3 of 9 play, uh, because say you've suffered shield damage, uh, now you might have the whole damage on a three of nine ship, mm -hmm. and so you could regenerate and get both. Um, I, I want to say there's maybe some play with the Kelvin Enterprises. Um, and it's shield damage on the Enterprise A, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's still the idea. I and I know there's other ships i know there's a deradix um that gets re-rolls based on damage to the hole mm -hmm. uh, so there there are cards out there um, and i haven't looked enough into it but there's i think there's enough in play where this is not going to redefine the way the game is played by any means but it could be an interesting scenario uh and maybe it does work well with your own decker. Uh, you can decker uh, your own ship to get uh, a bonus attack die and then have a ship that's uh, kind of the, the sacrificial lamb or has a way of repairing uh, damage that's not uh, the ship that you want getting boosted attack dice. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. I got, I got a real dumb one. Um, <laughs> Nell Chilton? Okay. Uh, when defending during the deal damage step after a ship suffers at least one damage to its hull, you may discard this card to perform a green maneuver. I, I don't know why you'd want that, but you could do that thing. Yeah. I'm, literally just, I'm just scrolling through and think, things that trigger off of taking hull damage. Uh, uh, most of them are pretty dumb. James is saying Kraxen with Miric, uh, yeah, with Miroc and Glendaro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah, Mirok's the key there. Uh, because then you're repairing uh, damage on a green maneuver. Yeah. So. Now, I ran a lot of Mirok real early in the in the game. 2013 days. Gosh, almost eight years ago. <laughs> I've been old. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Um, all right. Oh, yeah, I guess chat's saying that with Nell, it's when defending. Oh, you're right. That that wouldn't work for this. Well, it, 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 it's stupid even if it would work, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I do like the, the cracks in Mirok and Glendaro approach that James has got there. Um, Yeah, and, and the MR has too much hold to use Worf, but... Right, no, you'd, you'd be putting Worf on there yeah, to, it, to it, then do another ship, right? It'd be, or, yeah, it's just a chariot at that point for him. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, so the generic Intrepid class for the Borg, uh, Federation Borg, 29 points. Good stuff, seen a lot of those playing in my meta. A lot of hit points for 29 points, it's good. Yeah. Um, so the next next card in the stack here, <clears throat> Sphere 634. 
Borg Sphere. 6077. Two Borg slots, a tech slot, weapon slot, and a crew slot at 40 points. Combat phase. Spend a scan token besides this ship and target an opposing ship with, within range 1 to 2. Discard a scan, battle station, evade, or a target lock token besides the target ship. All right, David, I think it's uh, it's your go. I want to pair this with the USS Intrepid, the new one. Um, because it basically gives me... I can spell Intrepid, I promise. Uh, it basically gives me a free scan. Yep. And uh, on another ship. Uh, and a free evade. Not that I need an evade on my sphere, but I'll take it. I will take more durability. Yeah, why this. not? Uh, basically, the sphere, th this sphere, is meant to be a pain in the butt. Uh, just a little disruptor. And, um, you know, there are going to be situations where you want to keep that scan token. Because mm -hmm. the enemy rolling one less defense die is better than them losing a token. But uh, if you're gonna, if they have an evade token, go ahead, spend your scan token, get rid of their evade. It's it's worth it. Um, and being able to get rid of any token they have is typically a better situation for you. Um, I have run up against enough token spam that uh, any less token would be would have been helpful. Yeah. Um, Sam. I, I like the idea that you get to like scan offs now with all those crew that go with the, the Vulcan crew that gives you like three scans. Um, I, I would necessarily, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily put that on this or I, I remove the necessarily. I wouldn't put that on this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's fun disruption. Uh, anytime you're not, I, Pair pair this with something that lets you also have other tokens, right? Pair this with with Jean Luc Picard, right? Because like you want to also still have your your battle station or target lock. You've got six attack dice for God's sake. You want them to be quality. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like using using your token or 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 the intrepid, right? Using your token for for not making your attacks better as a drag. So make sure you got one of those too. Also, this gets into like rules lawyering, I guess, but and there's a lot of cards out there that place tokens next to other ships in the combat phase. So then you get into a really weird world of, I guess, like captain skill determining if yeah. the token that you want to get rid of is already there yet or not. Yeah, I, mean, and the, I guess that's technically solved by initiative, supposedly. Right. Um, so you got to make sure that you, you know, have a high enough captain, but that's an edge case. Yeah, um, I think the only the the real combo that I like um, for this is, you know, it's it's that world where you want to make everything even, because um, we we live in a meta where everybody's trying to get battle stations target lock. Mm -hmm. So my my thought was maybe pairing Vork on this. So then you, again, you're not taking. Well, it's not, it's not an action, so you're taking some kind of quality. You can take your target lock, comma, or you have to take a scan. So never mind, you're using the scan action. So the scan, you can either take off the target lock or the battle station. And then again, with Vork, when defending, you can plink off the rest of their of their quality, and you're making the floor even at that point. Kind of. Interesting. I wish I wish the timing worked differently. Like you're getting the scan back at the wrong moment. Oh, you don't get a scan back. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yes, I guess you do for the Vork. Right, like if you could scan. somehow get the scan token from Vork at the beginning of the combat phase, uh, like there's 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 a more fun combo that this almost isn't quite. But I do like the idea of a Borg debuff fleet. That's that's just rude and delightful. <laughs> oh, okay. So you said you said magic words, Borg deep. Debuff fleet. So run operations officer or mm -hmm. operations drone. Oh uh, yeah. Sorry, I was looking at operations. 
Uh, so then you're tossing auxiliary power tokens beside the target ship in the planning phase, mind you. Yeah, more on that later. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, add we'll tractor beam, the independent tractor beam. Mm. Yeah. And so, and even run that on the sphere on 634 so that you're kind of disabling one ship and removing the tokens from another ship. Oh. Oh, that's that's nice. It's like, okay, I'm going to hold you down over here and mess with you with my other hand. Yeah. That's nice. You're definitely going to yeah, you're definitely going to want one of those higher skill captains that give you something for some kind of quality. Uh, or you can just then leave the, or you can just leave the floor even. I don't it's, right, and then you start running into points problems, yeah. which is, I guess, the, the Borg's perennial problem. Yeah, well, uh, James is saying used uh, with Janeway, a transwarp signal, transwarp signal in 412. Oh, yeah, yeah. Transwarp signal, definitely a good Borg card, always. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember what 412 does exactly, um, so maybe you can fill me in on that one. Uh, action, discard the card and one of your drone tokens to target a ship within range 1 to 3. Remove any one token from beside the target ship. Then place one scan token beside your ship. That lines up nicely. Yeah. That, that does the debuff thing. Yeah. And it's two points. Yeah. Yeah, I think that qualifies. I like it. Alright, next card. Unique Captain. It is locked to a Borg ship. Locutus. Um, I think one of the biggest things I'm going to point out now is it does get drone tokens, but it is also skill locked, um, which is kind of a neat, um, a neat thing they did with with a couple of the captains in this pack. Um, cannot be equipped to a ship of the same fleet or in the same fleet. Cannot be equipped to a ship in the same fleet that has John Luke Picard equipped to a ship. Setup. Place nine drone tokens on this card. Add two crew slots to the ship's upgrade bar. You do not pay faction penalty when equipping crew upgrades to this ship. Sam, it is your go. <clears throat> it's four points! It's four points! <laughs> uh, just, just before everything else, it's, it's four for nine. It's four. Four points for nine and an elite talent slot. It's four points for nine and an elite talent slot, and it discount and and it it doesn't discount, but it, it reduces yeah, the yeah. cost of other things. Like there's and adds, oh. adds two slots. Like yeah, like this is this is stunningly good. Um, the, they get they got themselves into a world in this game where whenever they release a Picard, it has to be at least as good as the other Picard so that anyone would ever play it. Which means that there's just a whole like a whole pile of shockingly good Picard cards. Yeah. Um, and this is one of them. I, like Borg ships often have problems having crew upgrade slots. This helps solve that. Borg ships have point value problems. This solves that. The yep. only limiting factor is sometimes you wish you could put actual Picard there instead. Yeah. Um David, do you have anything else to add to it? Oh, you probably want me to talk about combos too. Oh, anything yeah, that go uses ahead. drone tokens. Yeah, just anything that uses drone tokens, right? It, it doesn't it doesn't hurt you. Uh that's what you want here. Yeah. Uh David. Yeah, this is one so I know you're talking about okay, I want Picard for for actions, but you can bring seven of nine and morass on board with Picard. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, that's seven more points, but that fits. That fits on most Borg ships. Uh, it's an expensive way to do it, and you probably should have something else that disables, um, and there's cheaper ways for Borg to get battle stations anyways. Uh, threat analysis. Ocular implants. Yeah. Uh yeah right like if you put this in ocular implants you you've basically got a uh a normal picard right like normal picard that you can't use against cloaked ships is easy but you still 
about your two actions that you want to do. Yeah. Right. And and, and it's solid. And uh, and you've still got two crew upgrades to do whatever you want with, pretty much. And the Borg have some solid crew now uh, that you actually want to run. So I and every other faction has solid crew that you want to run on a Borg ship. Yeah. Right. Right. Use use this to get your Romulan pilot onto the onto the ship. Use this to get a quark on there. Right, like any faction for not the price of faction penalties. Yeah, yeah. I again, I it's it's a solid card, and I think the cost is what amazed me when I first saw this card, because I, I think this was one of the preview cards. Um, it just it does so much for so little. And it, oh, and I guess it's worth saying. I don't know if anyone's like home shop plays faction pure anymore, right? But like. In, in places where you can break that by getting rid of faction penalties, this just gives the Borg an incredible advantage. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Locutus, great card. Uh, next card in the stack here is is a crew unique. It's Bellana Torres, uh, Federation Borg, dual faction, three points. Add one Borg... Um, Borg slot to the ship's upgrade bar. The Borg's uh, upgrade equipped to the ship using that Borg upgrade slot costs minus one for each unused upgrade slot on that ship's printed upgrade bar. Whew. Okay. Um, David, it's your turn. I have a math degree. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a math teacher. This card makes my head hurt with the points. Uh, that being said, uh, it's still a nice card. Uh, it's it's great. It's just I, I say all of that just to say that the rules this game has for unused slots and when things appear and disappear are just overcomplicated. Uh, yeah. But yeah, getting your expensive Borg upgrades for cheaper. Uh, Balana is the perfect answer to that. Now you do have to account that Balana is three points, but she's also a nice conversion. And like seven is a way to get Borg upgrade slots off of the Borg faction. Although, like we've talked before, a lot of your really good Borg upgrades are Borg faction locked. Yeah. Uh, Sam, go ahead. Uh, I'm not a math major. Uh, I teach English. Um, but I have a hard time constructing... I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's mathematically possible that this would be more worth it than 7, right? It's a very similar card. It gives you a slot. It gives you a discount. 7's a point cheaper. 7 discounts the thing that you put in the slot. Mm -hmm. This one gives you discounts for slots that are unfilled, and for me at least, if I have Borg slots, I'm filling them. Like, there are things I want to put in those slots. I have not yet been in a situation where it's like, man, I got all these empty Borg slots that aren't helping me, I'll put Bellana Torres on here. So, like, the, the ships that have the most Borg slots are, like, well, named... I don't, I don't think it just discounts for Borg slots. Oh, yeah. sure, 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 sure. Like, uh, right, like uh, all the slots that you're putting on here. But does this get rule of three? Oh, I don't believe so because they they said in building, uh, you can discount. Uh, it's zeros your floor. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I guess there's yeah, sure. Okay, so put it on the queen vessel prime. Put it on one of these like really big chips that have that are very expensive and have lots of slots. Uh, and just put, like, one really expensive Borg upgrade on it, right? Like, if yeah. you want to run those old, like, Ablative Shield stuff, um, this is this is the solution for putting old Borg upgrades on your ship. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think you're right, because anytime... If I'm building a ship, I'm filling the slots. Right. Like, I don't, I don't ever purposely build a ship to leave the slots empty to discount something. Um, 
I think that's that's her strong. Her, I think that's the, the the weakness of this card is is the discount itself. Yeah, Which if she did to something say. else too, if she did something in play, right? Like I like these ones that are like discounts and then some sort of bonus when you're actually in the game. But this is this is for the Craigs of the world. Shout out to Craig if you're out there, right? Or the Jameses, <laughs> right? If you're if you're one of these people who's who's doing like calculus when you're making your build, power to you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I, not that guy. No, not I am definitely not either. So, just quick math. Mm -hmm. She comes oh so close to being able to put Borga Blade of Whole Armor on the overcube, but misses it by a point. <clears throat> and and nothing else, mm -hmm. right? Like you can put that on her, and nothing else. Her and the blade of armor, and that's it. Right. <sighs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> put put um no put a uh, put the 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 fleet captain that gives you a one point discount for a crew on a different ship. I guess. Yeah, that's what. And then you've mean. worked really, really, really hard to do that thing. Yeah. Right, and you have a captain skill of one. Right. <laughs> but it's okay because you're. This is also a shuttle build, right? Obviously. Yeah. Yeah, this, this, this chaos that we're putting together here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, all right. So the next card up is uh, Assimilation Target Prime Mirror uh, Borg Dual Faction Galaxy Class Five One Five Four uh, Borg Tech Weapon Crew Crew. You do not pay a faction penalty for the cards equipped to the ship. All tech upgrades equipped to the ship cost minus one. Coming in at 30 points. Uh, Sam, what do you think? Uh, um, It's one of those things where, like, you say all tech upgrades equipped to the ship cost minus one point, and then you give me one tech upgrade to play with. And obviously there are workarounds, right? You can True. get more tech upgrades onto a ship. Um, but then you're in the world where you're still uh you know building really really hard to justify the ship's ability um mm -hmm. and we can all agree that we don't like this one's maneuver dial right like we're all oh, on the same yeah, page that, that turns are nice yeah it's still a tank i like turning when i only have a 90 forward and a right. 90 rear yeah so you know again you can you can put things on here to get rid of the auxiliary power token when you when you turn right um but <sighs> and it's cheaper because you don't pay faction penalties mm -hmm. so you could exist in that world right just like eat up your own auxiliary power tokens every time you you do a a, a turn um but man i don't know that's all i got i mean on the same note you can throw cisco on here without eating the faction penalty for him too Right. The new Cisco. Uh, David. So it, it's worth noting you can put any Admiral on here and you don't have to pay the bonus three points. Oh. So that's oh, for really, cards, not upgrades. That's cute. Yeah, that's one really nice aspect. Yeah, that's something so, I didn't... That didn't click in my head until you just said it. So, you know, maybe this is a, a home for Annabryn Tain... Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I don't know, but as more admirals come out, uh, assimilation target prime starts looking somewhat viable. Well, and if your admiral is uh, forest, then yep. you've solved your turn problem too. Yep, true. That's what I was just thinking. Uh, I, I will say that Captain Tomalock from the Romulans uh, gives you a tech slot and gives you. Uh, I think it's rerolls. Uh, yeah, rerolls right. uh, for every tech upgrade that you have, and he's skill eight, and, and skill eight is not bad. Um, so that, and to me, that doesn't feel like a super workaround. Um, then I'm getting a nice passive two rerolls every time uh, on five dice. If yeah. I scan, that's gonna make it hurt a little bit more. I'd be okay with that, but granted, that's 35 points, and I kind of feel like for a 35-point ship, I want 
a little more to happen. Yeah. Um, um, and and I still have to fill my tech slots. And and I don't I don't have great tech to fill that are that go on a galaxy class. Always chemosite, but even chemosite's <laughs> less useful on, on this thing. Sure, sure, sure. Always chemosite. I guess chemosite would let, let me do a three reverse as I bite my lip. <laughs> a three reverse that that's a thing <laughs> i've done that with uh with captain's chair i think or maybe it was the other resource but i did a four reverse that was fun <laughs> yeah. interesting um i think the only other thought i had for this was maybe i mean you could put shield adaptation on it it's one of the, yeah. it, it gets cheaper yeah, yeah. It's, it's not great but you can you can turn you can turn the you can use integrated board technology to turn the tech slot into a Borg slot for free, if that's a thing you want to do. Okay. Uh, okay. I could be on board with that, and then you filled it for you know if you want to go the Tomalock route. Okay. Right. Yeah. There's there's a lot, a lot of cheap tech that you can put on here. Right. Reinforce shields for free because of the faction thing. Yeah. Uh. Right, like you can you can actually make this semi affordable because of those two abilities working together. That's true, and, and I actually like uh, Gen Cisco on this because you know good disruption fleets need a home for Gen Cisco. This works, and that gives you another tech slot. So okay, wait, wait, wait. stick stick with stick with me on this. Okay, uh, an Abrintain, um, and Tomalock, I guess. Uh, and then you fill both tech slots with shrouds that are free, and then you fill both. And then you fill one of the crew slots with a cheap dominion, and you turn this into your into your tain boat. Ooh. Okay, that's, that's a thought. Yeah, I I could I could work with that. I don't know if it's better than other tain boats necessarily, but that's the thing you could do. Free well, shrouds. And you've got three free rerolls on every shot. Right. So that, that lines up. I think it's viable. I don't think it's great, but I think it's at least playable if somebody wants a weird combo. Well, and like start with there and then build the good version, right? There's still an, an element missing to make this sing, but if you know, those of you listening at home, right, figure out the, 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 the card that will make it all come together. Maybe it's a Borg slot. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You've still got another crew and a weapon slot to work with, too. So. Yeah. Right. I mean, I guess we're not using the Borg slot, so you could put uh, uh, technological distinctiveness on there. there Actually, that, that's where it starts singing. That's that's where this starts being viable. And for the weapon, you put additional phaser. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. This, this sounds like every other build, but okay. Yeah, but it's a new way of doing every other build, so. And I guess you put... Um, green aid to get the the uh, scan convert lol <laughs> oh yeah we did it all right oh, solved i think it fits under 50 points it's it's getting close but i, I think it's there because a lot of stuff was free yeah, yeah. But, uh, or yeah. free adjacent yeah <laughs> <laughs> It might be a couple points here and there, but yeah, well, make your own modifications. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So I, I think we're in agreement that assimilation target prime's got some promise. Yeah, we kind of talked ourselves into that. <laughs> well, I think was it Joseph? Joseph ran it last uh, this last season. Yeah, it wasn't the scariest thing about his build, but I think it benefited from uh, he was using the the. Uh, he was doing an upgrade discount thing as well, using one of the fleet captains. So there was a lot of things happening. Huh. I see. <clears throat> All right. So next card on the list here is uh, one per ship, ocular implants locked to a Borg ship and a Borg captain. When the ship performs a target lock action, the ship may perform a battle station action as a free action. It's an elite talent for four points. Uh, David, it is your 
you're up. Obviously a really good card. Uh, if if anything, it feels slightly overpriced but uh, and overly restrictive. Uh, natural fit on Voyager. Yep. Uh, I mean, good on spheres, but you just got to find ways to... Uh, to A, make sure you're doing target lock actions with a captain that's going to have an elite talent slot. And the Borg don't have a lot of those. So yeah. um, I think this is one where caution is uh, is warranted because this does not solve all of your problems. Uh, this is a card where you have to look at it and go, uh, is four points worth the investment here to uh to give me even more quality yeah but it doesn't need a whole lot more than uh than what you have because as we said target lock plus battle stations should give you uh it's it's something like 98 percent accuracy on the rerolls so yeah Maybe not quite that high, but it, it's it's a really high hit rate. Oh, for sure. Um, Sam, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in here again that we're, um, it's Dahar Master is what's doing it. Uh, a lot of people are running Dahar Master builds, which means that there's a lot more cloaking happening. Um, oh. So I'm gonna say pair this with Metaphasic Sweep. Okay. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because uh, it gives you the uh, target lock, even if the target ship has a cloak next to it. Uh, yeah. Um, so now you've you've gotten around the the issue there, uh, and still with your ninety seven percent accuracy or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that upgrade, and I, that's actually a fairly good up, a fairly good combo. Um, right, it works once, right? Metaphasic sweep is yeah, discard, yeah. but it's a, it's one shot. That one shot you get. Yeah, the the only other thing I can think of is pairing it, pairing ocular implants with. Let me pull them out here. Is lore. We've talked about it before, where he breaks pretty much any any restriction that's on an elite talent. So you can take ocular implants to any any ship at that point um, through lore. So he he's a pretty good upgrade with this card. Um, well, there's, I mean, there's a whole build you can do with it, um, with getting rid of crew upgrades and and whatnot, and then getting good quality. Um, yeah, right. There's a lot of dis disposable crew in the like Sakana land that exists. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it it'd be pretty. It, it's good for a lore alpha strike, if you will. Um, bump his captain skill up. Yeah, lore beta strike. <laughs> Maybe. He was first. That's true. Well. Um, all right. So, Ocular Implants. Good card. Good potential. Next card in the stack here. And we've got... Oh, I don't have my... We've got seven cards left. Uh, and the next card in the list here is Operations Drone. It is a captain uh, with an asterisk for the captain's skill. That's because it's got six drone tokens that go on this card. Uh, planning phase, spend one drone token on this card and target an opposing ship. Place an ox power token besides this target ship. Uh, it's range one to two, cost of three. Sam, yeah, this one is yours. This is lovely. I have not made this build yet. I keep almost making this build than not, but... Uh, there's a there's a delightful little world that you can exist in where you get your Borg ships behind the other person's your, your 360 ships, mm -hmm. scout ships, or, um, spheres, whatever. Get behind the enemy. Uh, you're running a bunch of Operation drones, right? It's non-unique. Yep. Uh, and and you can just keep your your opponent facing forward for the rest of the game, right? And not doing actions theoretically. Um, you can pair this with the Borg Queen. And then she can keep doing this every turn without lo losing her captain skill. That's nice. You can pair this with ten zillion other things that put auxiliary power tokens on and just get to that nice, like, two auxiliary power token world. Um, 
and anything that locks down actions, right? Once you've got two auxiliary power tokens on the opponent, uh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, David, I know you got a pretty good combo. Right. So I I mentioned this with uh, the independent uh, tractor beam mm -hmm. uh, because then you're turning their greens to whites, their whites to reds. Um, so they're really never going anywhere. Uh, I also like this with Ferengi Photon Torpedoes because yes. every time you take a shot, you're putting Ox Power Token on them. Now you can dump more on. Uh, there are there's some Borg upgrades that will rearrange drone tokens. Um, I, I think that might actually be uh, useful for this because uh, you might want to keep going. Uh, I do think Operation Drones are best run in at least two. I don't think you ever want to just have one out there uh, because I think that locking down multiple ships is a really solid way to go. Uh, and as for some of the those uh, ox power hander outers, I, I say Brunt is really good, Positron Beam. Yep. Um, those those are two of my go-tos in terms of I want to mess you up. But Vitter, I, Vitter on Pulse Trap. Yes, <laughs> bring that. Um, because you'll shake off your own because you're not going to have this done back to you. But if you can get your opponent stuck in a Vitter on Pulse Trap, uh, they're yeah. done for. Yeah. Uh, okay. Unless they're running something like the Tiny Prize, where they can still do actions. Still, it it's going to be really tough for them. Uh, you're not going to win any friends with a build like this, but you are going to win a game. Oh, yeah. you're going to for sure frustrate. It's going to just that that tractor beam is nasty, and and pairing it with Operations Drone makes it even better. More nastier. Yes. Um, I mean, you could put you could put Operations Drone on Queen Vessel Prime, so you're getting that drone token back. Um, and then I think you could pair it in a fleet with, as Sam said, with the the Queen, the Borg Queen that comes in this pack. Um, to effectively have, you know, a higher skilled Operations Drone, because she does the same thing, and her skill doesn't doesn't ever come down. Um, I, I like it. I didn't really, I, I myself didn't really find um, a place outside of Ferengi Photon Torpedoes for him, but I think pairing him with Tractor Beam is really smart. And it's something I might look at doing in the future. But yeah, I, I think that's a good combo right there. Uh, next card in the pack is uh, Scout 609, Borg Scout Cube, 3324, uh, Borg Tech Weapon Crew, coming in at 22 points. Um, action, target a friendly ship within range 1 to 2. Repair one shield and one hull on the target ship. Uh, David, what do you got for this card? I think the best uh, place for this... Uh... And it's tough to to really maximize repairing a shield and a hole. But yeah. um, I, I think it all starts with those distribution nodes uh, because suffering hole damage is, is tough to pull off. Uh, but... Uh, that's that's one way. Uh, Matt Decker's another uh, a Kraxen as a friendly ship, so that it's actually suffering shield damage. So maybe you build a a Kraxen and a Decker build, and you can buff yourself uh, on the Kraxen. The Kraxen will absorb a shield damage, uh, and then the six oh nine can actually uh, heal both of those damages. Yeah, uh, it's it's slow. It's it feels a little overly methodical. I don't know how awesome it is. Um, to me, this this has a feel of a really awesome support ship in a campaign style game. Mm. Uh, and, and I think there's a, an awesome role for it there. I would have loved for this to have been an upgrade. 
rather than a named ship ability. Mm. Yeah. Because I think it's a great ability. I'm glad it's in the game. I, I just, I hate that it's tied to a ship. That's, that's true. Um, I can see that. Um, Sam. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll add into this, like, back in the old, like, Colo days, this this would have been horrifying, right? Like, if back back in the days when you could you could have all attacks directed at one ship and just make that ship as gnarly as possible, you could use this to make that ship even gnarlier. Um, I don't remember quite how the Colo and Core errata work, other than everyone was playing them, and then everyone wasn't playing them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, that's that's sort of the world I would see this existing in, is get everyone to attack one ship and then make that ship never die. Again, I would rather use actions to attack than to heal, uh, and this kind of plays into that world for me. Yeah, I, I agree. I, there, it's, there are some people out in the community that, that like to play this kind of style of game where they have some kind of healing ship. Um. And this works for them. Um, you got to find a way to protect it, though, right? Like, yeah. you, you got to find a way to make this not just an immediate target. Yeah, I mean, you're you're spending an action, so you're you're spending a lot. Yeah. To do to do that. Um. Again, it's it's some people's cup of tea. It's it's not my cup of tea. Yeah. Um, and that that's okay. So I think six oh nine's got some mission play viability somewhere as David said, maybe a campaign, uh, one of the campaigns that people have made up. Um, I don't see it really joining the competitive circuit at any point. Uh, so the next card on the list here is unique. It is a tech uh, Borg one point integrated Borg technology. Add one Borg upgrade slot to this ship's upgrade bore. Uh, you do not pay a faction penalty for this card. Uh, Sam, what do you think about this card? This is the way to get threat analysis onto a Cal Hudson ship for free. Um, or mostly free. Uh, you know, it's 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 funny how many things in this pack do the same thing in different ways, right? It's like we've got yeah. all this cool Borg yep. stuff that you can only use on Borg ships. Uh, here are three ways of, of switching it up. Um, I actually tend to like this way best because crew slots tend to be really valuable to me, whereas tech slots are just there for chemo site. Sure. Um, so, so this is that, right? Like, you can get threat analysis anywhere you want it. You can get any, any of those fun Borg tricks um, that are not faction locked, which is some of them. Yeah. Uh, David, you got anything to add? Yeah, I think there's a, a role that this can play with uh, a 7 of 9 build, uh, just mm -hmm. so that you have more Borg upgrades and you're getting more discounts. And uh, But yeah, I, I like what Sam said best. It's good threat analysis. Cross right. or or put on a Borg ship for for more of that, right? And then yeah, if it's yeah. a Cal Hudson Borg ship, it's actually free and all that jazz. But it's always nice to, you know, for a long long time there weren't ways to get Borg slots off Borg faction aside from uh, Borg Romulan Alliance. Yeah, which was a, a a weird card and overpriced and i was amazed there was no federation borg alliance or you know temporary truce or something like that <laughs> because of the the scorpion episodes right um but yeah this uh it, it's okay and and there's situations for it again i've seen craig make uh much scarier use of it than i ever could yeah, I, I think this is one of those cards that we don't necessarily need to put all the combos up there because it combos... Similar with, to the last ones. Yeah, it, it combos with anything that's Borg tech. I mean, that's not completely faction locked. I think using it to get maybe double threat analysis works um, best if you, if you want to go that route. One of them's just fine too. Um, but yeah, I think you guys said it best and it 
it works really nice to put dispersion field mm. on something as a protection as a protector card. Mm. That's a good. That's point. actually yeah, that's true. That's not true. a bad way to to use the points. Yeah. All right. So the, I do think threat oh. analysis is good too. Yeah. Um, it, in in my meta, it was people were running double threat analysis to get a battle station each round. Mm -hmm. um, right. And they were getting them for free, so. Or they were getting the, yeah, you know, that's discounted a, down to free. It's a good trick. Yeah. Um, next card up is another captain, unique, Catherine Janeway. Uh, Federation Borg dual faction, cost of five, got an elite talent slot. Set up, place eight drone tokens on this card. And she is not skill locked, so she's got captain skill of eight at the start. Um, each time an opposing ship within range performs an evade, scan, or a battle station action, you can spend one drone token on this card and target that opposing ship. Perform the same action as a free action and place a ox power token besides the target ship. Um, this one, David, it is, what do you think? One, I know the combos are out there, but they're just not hitting me. Um, I I like what Janeway brings to the table, um, but I feel like she she just works on her own. Yeah. Um, if anything, I will say that you, she feels like the ship the the captain for the ship that you bring your gankers on so that you can affect your opponent's combos where they don't need to depend on their tokens and thus uh, their ships will actually use tokens and then she can benefit from those. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Sam, you got anything to add to, to Janeway? Yeah, it's, it's it's basically just that, right? You got to make sure that they're performing actions, uh, and there's so many ways to get tokens that aren't actions now. Um, she's still great, uh, but you just need to make sure that that happens. Uh, maybe pair with cloaked mines, which force you to take a scan action, but then they just don't take the scan action. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> best that I got for that one. Yeah, um, yeah. I think you guys are right. I was thinking that she'd be perfect against Vulcans, but you guys are right. Those are those aren't actions technically. Those are placing right. placing tokens which, down, which, which is which is good her. balance. Yeah, man, you guys, you guys are right. Um, huh. Yeah, I, I guess it's, it's there's something out there. There's there's a spot for her somewhere. Um, I can't just I can't think of it off the top of my head at the moment either. Um, you have to, you have to know that your opponent's going to do certain things, and as I've said, that's always tricky territory. Yeah. Well, I I, I don't think she's a bad captain. She's skill eight, um, one drone token. I mean, she's not going. She's not the top. She's not the top tier in this pack, but she's not by any means below. Yeah, um, usable. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next card in the pack is unique. It is an elite talent locked to a board captain. Uh, four points. Root command. Combat phase. Discard this target and target an opposing ship, range 1 to 2. During the target's declare target step this game round, you choose that ship's target. The target must still be legal. Uh, Sam, what do you so, think? So, uh, yeah, com combo this with Zial. Combo this with Feedback Pulse if you're running it. Um, right, like make them attack something that will cancel their attack and then shoot it back at them. And, and that's fun. Okay. Yeah, uh, I didn't think about it's, Zial. It's, yeah, it's... I would not build that build because it requires <laughs> so many things to have land at, landed absolutely perfectly. Um, Like, so many things have to be in exactly the right range to happen. Um, 
but theoretically, you could use this to redirect it to a ship that's good at canceling attacks or absorbing attacks a time. Um, anything that this cards is of somewhat limited utility. Yeah. Uh, David, do you have anything to add? It with uh, Steady Eel um, being a very redirect fleet. Uh, gosh, maybe even with uh, Sierna Kolrami, if you built a very defensive fleet. Uh, even a Feedback Pulse uh, build. Uh, feedback Pulse is one of those board cards we don't see very often. But if you ran Feedback Pulse, I could see bringing in a, a super attack to yourself, canceling it and sending half of it back at them. Yeah. Um, the so problem think... is, as, as someone who has run a Feedback Pulse, the problem is they can choose to like not buff an attack, right? Like They can make an attack, not use a battle station. It's hard to make Feedback Pulse be as great as you want it to be. Sure. But if they have some of that built-in conversion where they you know basically where they have to do it yeah if if you could, if that exists yeah uh you know cloaking wharf right that that's not optional yeah that's fair and and, and they can go oh i forgot no i'm gonna make you do it <laughs> huh never thought of it that way uh yeah, and, and I don't... Root Command's a really tough card to build with. Uh, I could see target uh, changing the target to a ship with Rebellion, even. Um, mm -hmm. Just to give yourself one extra attack uh, and take less dice. Uh, th there's, there's things there. Uh, and there's a lot of redirect, absorb attack cards... But I, I do think it's tough. Yeah. Um, chat said that it's unique, so it's not ideal. I think that's true. Um, you know, that way you can't have a fleet with multiples in it. I would not want to live in a world where that was legal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be a headache. Um, so, all right. So root command. Interesting card. Um, probably not something I'm I personally is gonna play with. Um, the next card up is another captain it is unique, locked to a Borg ship, skill nine, elite talent slot, um, five points, Borg Queen. Set up, place nine drone tokens on this card. This card has the ability text of all captains in your fleet whose abilities require one or more drone tokens to be spent. Um David, how do you feel about this card? Well, I, I'm going to steal Sam's line. This card gets better the bigger all is. Hmm. Uh, you know, give her the operations drone. Give her the tactical drone with a, a, a target lock. Give her the tactical drone that places a battle station. Give her the tactical drone that gets to roll a, an attack die back at the opponent every time that they attack her ship. Uh, give her Janeway, give her, you know, keep giving her things. Uh, and yeah, she's going to run out of drone tokens real quick, but yeah, uh, the, the point there is that she just gets better the more she has. And it's not necessarily that she's going to do all of those things all the time. It's that she has all of the options. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Sam, do you have any more to add to it? He took my line, obviously. Um, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that you can't cheese this this way, but someone who is a more rules lawyer than I am, if I have a uh, Borg captain on a shuttle docked on a ship, does that captain count as in my fleet? Oh, um... I mean... I want to think it does. Because the the downside of this is that you've got shitty board captains with, like, Captain Skill 2 running around on the map. But if you don't have to have that, 
if this is part of something where you're already running a shuttle, um, or or something like that, hmm. uh, if you could bury a board captain in a place where its low skill doesn't hurt you, that's what I got for combos. Yeah, it's like, would she count uh, the board captain on a uh, on a Borg support vehicle token? Uh, right. Exactly. Right. Like there's. There's places where you could bury board captains and then just give feed her more abilities. Yeah, it's in uh, fleet, I, but is it active? Right, and I would definitely use that for like the 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 two captain or the three captain skill, whatever it is, the one that lets you be a target lock at all times. Yeah, yeah, that that's a very interesting question. I, I mean, obviously, it's way way above my pay grade. Um, yeah, answer. leave leave that to the lawyers. Yeah. I, I got to assume that the answer is no, but I've assumed that the answer is no for stupid stuff before, and it's been yes. So who knows? <laughs> yeah, so that's definitely an interesting thought. I mean, I think Janeway, she works well if you want two of them. Um, she works well with the tactical drone that does the battle station thing. Um, and the tactical drone that, that gives you uh, the hands of auxiliary power tokens, right? If you're doing the yeah. all ox all the time, she's a nice sensor of that. Yeah. Um, again, skill locked, so that's that's nice. She's going to be one of the higher skilled captains on the board. Um, yeah, I think she's a good captain. I think she's she may be the second best captain in this in this pack. I mean, I think Lucutus is by far the best captain in the pack. I buy that. All right. So the next card in the pack. Um, is a Borg crew, three points, unique. That is Croesus. Increase the captain skill of the captain equipped to the ship by one. If the captain is a Borg captain, increase its skill by three instead. Once per game, when the captain of the ship is discarded, this card becomes the ship's captain, and place five drone tokens on this card. All right, Sam. I don't get a lot of use out of the bottom part of this. Uh, this card, this card solves a problem, and the problem is that there is a cap to Borg captain skill. Um, so it's not a combo, but this helps solve the like. Uh, escal you know, Lakutus only goes up to nine, right? Now it goes up to twelve. Yeah. You're competitive with some Dahar Master stuff and, and other things that are out there, Wharf stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of using using Tarange combos to, to get rid of uh, uh, useless captains and turn them into better captains and this does not provide as much uh, trick as Tarange does uh, the independent captain that uh, kills your captain, gives you an attack die and becomes skill 7. Uh, this is less good than that. Yeah. Uh, David, do you have anything to add? Yeah, this is less good than Klingon Wharf that does the exact same thing with Captain Skill but costs two points. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I guess those five drone tokens are worth a point, but I, I don't know. I I I like the other version of Croesus better. Um, I, I am with Sam uh, in in saying. Well, hey, board captain skill increase. I believe this is the first one we've seen, and the, yes. thus the only one we've seen. Um, I just wish that they'd put it on a different name, and that it had been a little better. Um, I, that being said, I like it. I, I like having a way to increase uh, my board captains, uh, but I don't know how yeah. much I'm going to run it. Yeah, I mean. It's Skill increases aren't aren't bad. Uh, there's, I mean, there's like you said, there's other ways to get around it. Running Worf. Um, I guess if you run Worf out of faction, he's three points. But he's three points, and then he's only boosting a captain skill by one. Yeah, because it's not a Klingon captain. True. True. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I like I like Croesus for his top text. I just the bottom text. I rarely have I ever lost a captain in a match. Um, well, and when it happened, rarely have I ever needed five drone tokens. 
Like, <laughs> yeah, those those two things together. That's, that's true. Um, I mean, I get why they did it. It's thematic, but yeah, you you're right. So I yeah, I like Cro I like his top text. The bottom text I could have done without. Um, and he was the last card in the pack. So we've we've gone through them all. We've seen some of the good combos. We've talked about the strengths and weaknesses of each card. Um, Sam, what do you what do you think is the pack overall? Now that we've done we've gone through all that. It's fun. I feel like we were dishing on a lot of these cards, but overall, uh, there is at least you know if you are running Borg, you need technological distinctiveness, right? The pack is worth the price of admission just for that. Um, and even aside from that, there's some good tricks in here, right? Like you've got yeah. a couple of very ships. Um, you've got, uh, you've got some captains that you can play around with. You've got a bunch of ways to get Borg stuff on other ships, right? So like, this is, this is a, a uh, indispensable for Borg players because of one card and, a good time, I think, for anyone who wants to, to use it and opens up a lot of shenanigans if that's the way you want to play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, David, what do you what do you think about this pack now? So this pack's been out what? Two years? Yeah. Something pre like pre pandemic, that. yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Um I am delightfully surprised that there were still things that uh, that we we came to appreciate uh, what what we could do with assimilation target prime mm -hmm. uh, certainly was a, a nice uh, boost in my mind. Uh, I I think there's some cards where we go, yeah, we'd like to see it done differently. Uh, but there's also some really good cards. I, I think this this pack might have more of a middle ground to it and even more of like, okay, if I'm going to go grades, it probably has fewer A's and more B's, C's, and D's than the newer packs. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly the newest five, if I throw Alliance in there. Yeah. But that doesn't make it bad in any way. Uh, because what's good in here is is still really good, and, and I appreciate that this exists. I think I, I want to say this is maybe an overcorrection that the Borg were so good for so long that they didn't want to give the Borg way too much power and make them so good again, yeah. because then they'd have to make everything else so good. Yeah. Um, so I'm okay with the Borg not being uh, stupidly broken. So I guess let me ask you guys this, um, because I've seen I've seen the question come up a few times in the community um, on the Facebook posts or the Facebook community, people asking if this faction pack's worth it or you know if this faction pack is worth it. Do you guys think that this faction pack is worth the purchase? Oh yes. Yeah, you, I think so. <laughs> yeah, if you can get it at retail or close to retail, yeah. Um, what it's tending to do in the secondary market and be double the price of like you know eighty ninety dollars, that's a bit much. Yeah, I I don't think any product uh, that's double its price is worth it. Sure. No, no. Um, but all right, and that's, I mean, that's that's our show for tonight. So, you know, thank you, Sam, for joining us tonight to talk some Borg. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, no problem. I mean, we love we love to have you back on on another episode in the future. Um, if if you want to come back, that is. Yeah, yeah. You, you know where to find me. <laughs> Absolutely, David. Thank you. It's always a pleasure um, getting together with you and, and talking some Attack Wing. Yeah, it's, it's always great to be around. <laughs> um, so, um, like I said, that that's that's the end. Um, I'm gonna. I know we've got um, a couple more Fremont Reformation games coming up this week. Hopefully, we're getting some more on the schedule. 
Um, so we should look out for those getting streamed. Um, you can just you can check the socials, the Antares Shipyard Facebook page, um, the community Facebook page, our Discord. Um, that's always a good place to check. And then next week we should have another captain's table coming to you. Um, I think it's the, the other faction pack that came out with this one. That would be the animated series. And I'm looking forward to talking about some of those cards in there. Um, other than that, thank you everyone for hanging out tonight. And we'll see you. Have a good night.